Welcome back, Namaste Bitches. I am Melissa Feaster, and guess what? I am here with my most beautiful co-host, Teresa. Hi, what's up, Namaste Bitches? It's Teresa here, and I have a surprise for everyone. <gasps> what's your surprise? It's a blast from the past. Beautiful Jacqueline Larita. What? Jacqueline's Ooh, here? Fun. Come on. What a blast in the past. Or should I say... Um, I'm Lucy Ethel, Ethel from the past yeah. now. <laughs> Ethel from the block is here, Jacqueline. It's so nice to officially meet you. I've heard so much about you. you. Obviously, I've been hearing a lot lately about you because... No, are you kidding? No, no you're just a little bit. So obviously, we've all heard a lot about you and Teresa reuniting and, you know, Teresa has been diving into that a lot with me downloading everybody on how it went. But, you know, for me, I actually like to hear the way back when, like, when did you guys, cause we know kind of you guys reunited and we caught up, but like there was serious shit that went down between you guys. Like what is your friendship 20 years ago? Yeah. Like, this has been a 20 yeah. year friendship, right? I met her when she just moved here from Vegas. And um, yeah. Dina introduced me to her and she's like, that's going to be my f- future sister-in-law. And I was like, wow, she's so beautiful. You know, I was like, she's so pretty, like her hair, uh-huh. her big boobs, her small little waist, her small <laughs> little body, her legs. She had the best legs. Her legs were so muscular. They really You were. know how said Teresa goes right to the boobs, Jacqueline? Yeah. I, know, well, I was going to talk about her ass because I remember you having the perfect ass in your, and you had just given birth. You had just had Gia, and I just remember seeing cute little Gia with her big, beautiful eyes and her long lashes, and you were walking, and I'm like, she just had a baby? You were so tiny. You had this cute, round bubble butt. I'm like, that girl has like the- I don't remember what month that was. You had no business having that body then. Yeah, okay. So with Jacqueline's boobs and Teresa's butt, you guys make the perfect me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Show, Show her your boobies. Show her your boobies. Yeah, <laughs> I like to show. Ter- Teresa always wants to see my boobs. Yeah, she, yeah, she has a nice. <laughs> Melissa has a nice body, really nice body. Ooh. Teresa has to fill me up every time we see, and then Louis gets jealous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, Louis likes it. I'm Actually, sure. Josh, my husband, gets yes. jealous because he doesn't he get any it. of that. All he men would like just... it. Chris would like it. All men would like two girls <laughs> filling each other up. They All right, we've already way diverted in this conversation. Now we're on to threesomes. Okay, before threesomes started, because I'm curious, you know, Teresa's always said multiple times to me on the podcast, she's always said, if I could go back, my season one and season two were hands down my favorite. Yeah, and you obviously were there I for agree. all of it. So what was it like I mean, just starting the show of what Jersey freaking is. Like, how did you guys meet? How did we start the show? Like, I want all the behind the scenes stuff. All right, well, let, well, make Jacqueline start. Because if, if it wasn't for Jacqueline, she'll, you wanted a sign. I signed a contract in front of her and she mailed it in for me with no lawyer or anything. Yeah, I was like, you have to do this. So you, Jacqueline, already had, you were already locked in, Jacqueline. They came to you. Yes. They're like, we want to do this housewife. T- was it called Real Housewives of New Jersey? It was called Jersey Moms at first. So Jersey Moms. So they came to you. They didn't tell us it was part of a franchise in the beginning. So you had no, and oh, because OC was already out. Yep, OC was out. And so we didn't know it was it was part of a franchise yet. We just knew it was going to be Jersey Moms. We didn't think anybody would watch it. I didn't even know. I didn't even watch reality TV. I had no idea. Like, we just thought it was going to be fun. Like, oh, they follow around our lives. We're funny. You know, we have a big family. We have fun. You know, they can see us on our day to day. Who cares? Like, I didn't even understand where this was going. <laughs> I just thought it would be fun to do. It was you. Who else did they have then already locked in? Her and Dina. Dina. Yeah. Okay. The sal- owners of the salon at Chateau gave gave them Dina and our name. And then we made suggestions as to who should be on the show. And you were close with Dina. I was close with Dina. Dina and I were very close. We, we vacationed together. We hung out all the time. You know, I loved her. She was like my little sister. And then through that, you met Caroline, obviously, from being so close with Dina. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's her, that's her other sister-in-law. So Caroline, my other sister-in-law, when we first moved to New Jersey, we moved in with Caroline. So we lived with Caroline there. I actually got pregnant in Lauren's bedroom with my son. No <laughs> way. Okay, <laughs> we see. 
house. Oh my, you guys were really close then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, Lauren wasn't staying in there at the time. Chris and I were staying there because we were building a house at the time. So um, yeah, we were staying with Caroline. We stayed with her for like, I don't know, six months or so before we even moved into our house. Damn. Okay. You guys were like, okay, let's make this our home. Literally, Caroline, we're making it our home and I'm going to do the do and get knocked up in your house. No, like CJ was conceived in Caroline's house. That's incredible. Do you know that, Teresa? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> so then how did it all start going down? They were like, Dina, Jacqueline, you guys are dope. Let's get other people. Let's do this Jersey moms. Dolores was on the table, but then I think her boyfriend at the time didn't want her to film. There was some reason why she couldn't do it. And then um, Dina actually suggested, or she said, I heard there was this girl, Danielle at the salon. She's really eccentric and uh-huh. blah, blah, you know, something about her. So I said, oh, I'll check her out. Dina really wanted to go out with her first to kind of feel her out. But because I ran into her at the salon, because the owners were like, that's the girl that, you know, we were thinking of. That would do Oh, it. you didn't know Danielle at all? No. No, I had no, no, nothing about her. But Danielle went to the same salon as, as Jacqueline and Dina. Yeah. So the owners were like, that's the girl she was talking about. So I approached her and I said, would you ever do a reality show? And she's like, hell yeah, I would or whatever. And so I gave her name to the producers. And I think Dina got mad at me because she's like, I wanted to take her out first to see what she was about before we like committed her but i i saw her in person so i just did i don't know why i just i suggested her because literally within minutes of talking to her she was telling me all this stuff and i could see that she was very eccentric and i'm like she would be good tv probably yeah (laughs) and to this day dina is still like remember when i wanted to scout her out first before we signed her on the so dina went out with her before we started filming dina went out with danielle and they they all went out and then they didn't like each other before filming started and but it was already too late she was already brought in so this beef started pre cameras even rolling yes so then how did you manage that? Because you're like, I like Danielle. She's this new friend. Yeah. Dina is my like sister-in-law. Um, It was basically like, don't bring your beef on camera. Just like, don't bring it up. Like around me, don't bring it up. Like I, you know, because obviously I'm in between. And when they had their falling out, none of them wanted to film with Danielle. Remember that, Teresa? No. And so the producers yeah. made me film with Danielle. So I was like, Teresa, you can't make me be the only person filming with Danielle. You've got a You're neutral. Like you film with me too. Cause I can't just be filming with Danielle because no one else would film with her. So it was like really awkward because someone had to film with her because we were all casted together. Oh my God. That was right off the gate. Yeah. So I made Teresa film with me with Danielle because <laughs> I was like, I don't know. and then the more I filmed with her, the more things I would find out about her. And even though it was like, I didn't agree with like her lifestyle. I still, she was nice to me and she wasn't giving me any trouble or whatever. So I was just like, whatever that that's on her. Like that's her life. I'm not trying to judge her life. It's just, you know, I'll just whatever, you know, and just tried to keep it separate. But there was a lot of behind the scenes pressure and stuff. It was really hard because, you know, we were new. This was new to filming. We didn't know how it worked. Like you have to film with this person or you didn't know, like, a lot of things that were said were going to be cut out, you know? Right. And whole stories weren't told. Obviously. So I would say like nice things about Dina too on camera. They didn't air that stuff. You know, they aired other stuff. So again, it's the, you know, they know how to control it. Her narrative went a certain way. And so she was like, well, I said nice things about you. Why didn't you say nice things about me? And I'm like, well, I did on camera, but they didn't air. Cause we, this was all new to us. They, we didn't realize they did all this stuff. You know, <laughs> to us. right. You don't know who's working behind the curtain. So when you see one family going through all this, like, would you want to, you know, work with your family? No, absolutely not. You know? Yeah. It was really frustrating because even, even in a lot of scenes where I was sitting there, they took my voice out completely. And they, and I'm a very spoken person. I hold my own. I don't hold back. I'm like, I really am. But they just made me like voiceless in certain conversations. We'd be around a table and everybody would be talking, including me. And then I would be cut out and it would just be them talking or something. And it was just frustrating. So people thought that I didn't have a voice or something, but I did. (laughs) Like Like a voice to like back, like your family saying, aren't you backing us up? But even like in a, in the scene, like with Caroline and maybe you, Teresa, I can't remember who all was there, but we were around the table. And I think we were talking about 
something like it could have been Danielle. It could have been whatever. I always said my opinion, but they always cut out my opinion. Huh. It's hard to explain, but like there was things that I said to speak up about certain things, but it wasn't aired. So we've been talking a lot about health on this podcast, physical health and mental health. And now we're going to talk about gut health. And I know that bloating and gas are not the sexiest things to be talking about, but in real life, affecting me for sure, that is why you always have to take care of your gut health. So you don't have to be talking about all this stuff. You know, I just started taking something new for that. It's called Symbiotic Plus. It's from the company called Ritual. I know exactly what you're talking about. Ritual is science-backed and research-stacked. And the reason Symbiotic Plus is so great for gut health is because it's actually prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic. So it really supports a balanced gut microbiome. I like it because it's a delayed-release capsule, so I don't feel nauseous after taking it. And it actually has a minty taste too. Mm. And that's what I love about it. Definitely. That is a bonus. And Symbiotic Plus is also vegan certified and non-GMO. As a certified nutritionist that I am, Symbiotic Plus is something I can really get behind and recommend. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide, your insides. There's no more shame in your gut game. So Melissa, that's why Ritual is offering 10% off during your first three months. That is a great offer. 10% off? All you have to do is visit ritual.com slash namaste to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash namaste. What a time to be a Bravo fan. We're getting the end of the Gorkas and the Judices over on Real Housewives of Jersey. Vanderpump Rules is about to have its best season in a long time, and Summer House is going to be the most layered and complex we've seen yet. I'm covering all of it over on my podcast, She Speaks Bravo with Emily Hanks, available everywhere you get your podcasts. When you got casted, though, you and Dina, did you know Teresa already? Yes, I already, we'd been hanging out. For oh, yeah, we hung out. Yeah. So, so when I joined the show, CJ, my first filming day was CJ's sixth birthday. So I'd already known Teresa pre-CJ. She had a birthday party at the house. And, yeah, I remember. I'd already known Teresa at least six years, you know? So seven years. I've known her seven years at that point. But then Teresa didn't want to sign the contract. She didn't want to sign the contract. And I was like, come on, you got to do it. It'll be so fun. Like, I knew Teresa's personality and I knew that she would be good. You know, and I'm like, you have to do this with me. Because we'd always have so much fun together. Anything Teresa and I did ended up in laughs. Like, all I can remember is just laughing all the time. Like, everything we did was like silly, fun. Yeah, Laugh. we always had we always had a good time. And it's hard to find other couples where the husbands also get along. So it was nice because the guys would get along and then we had the kids and then like, you know, CJ was like buddy, buddy with your kids. You know, they would all hang out. But then Teresa, do you think, you know, what I'm thinking about because look at how obviously past season two has been for you. Do you think that's maybe a sign back then? Like you didn't want to sign it. You don't want to sign the contract. You don't want to sign the contract that maybe you shouldn't have signed it. It took 11 months to sign it. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Like they were all like over me. <laughs> I would call them and be like, you think I should sign it? And they're like, oh, we would. And then like, I remember one Dina one day was like, I don't even want to talk to you. Don't even call me. Like, like <laughs> leave me alone. You know, I was like, oh my God. Cause I kept, you know, I wasn't sure like if I wanted to do this. Yeah. I didn't know what, I'm like, what is this? You know? So all you guys knew each other except for Danielle. Except for Danielle. Jack, I mean, and Caroline, like I wasn't friends with Caroline. Like I hung out, my friends were Jacqueline and Dina. Caroline was Dina's older sister, but like she wasn't my girlfriend, you know, like Jacqueline and Dina were my girlfriends. Yeah. The Dina and Teresa, Dolores and I, we would all hang out. And yeah. And Dolores. Some other, you know, people, through. Yeah, I, f- I forgot that Dolores was supposed to do it way in the beginning. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. We had a group of girls that would always go out and hang out together before, yeah. and it was always that. And then I suggested Caroline 
And then the cameras went over to her house and they liked her and then they picked her. As we see in the show, you and Teresa were always laughing, having fun. You always saw this fun, silly side. So when you get to the freaking end of the first season with the infamous table flip, were you like, holy fuck, who is this person? I swear, I had never seen Teresa angry ever. The whole seven years I knew her, I never saw her mad. Yeah. I'd never seen that side of her. And it, it was almost comical. Like I, I was, it was funny because it was so shocking that I was like, oh my God. I was like in shock. <laughs> and I was just like, wow. <laughs> I've never seen her angry. Like I never saw that side of her ever, ever in seven years. It takes a lot to get me angry, but once you get me angry, forget about it. <laughs> Were you just like, what just happened here? Like our meal, our dinner is on the floor? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it took me a second to register it. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> She's screaming, being pulled off by Joe in the background. Nobody knew what she was saying. She went, she said, and you come into my shore house. And no one knew what you were saying because you were talking. I know, about I know, because I was screaming so loud. Wait, what was she saying? What was she screaming that was mic'd because Joe was holding her back? Yeah, she was saying something. You come into my shore house because she came into her shore house, had sex with her boyfriend in the bed, didn't wash the sheets. So she was saying, you don't even wash the sheets. And my daughters are there. And, like, <laughs> I know. and they cut out all of that. They just cut you saying like, and you come into my shore house. And everyone was like, what is you? I know. Oh, so you were mad because Danielle came to your shore house, bone some dude in your, in your bed. Yeah. Like, like at least like take the sheets off the bed or, you know, leave them on the edge, edge of the bed or something. I don't freaking know. Like, yeah. Like you got to clean up after yourself. Don't get my kids use condoms to play with. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Jacqueline, after this freaking happens, like, what was your conversation? That was dope. What the hell happened? Who is this? After the shock wore off and we were like, what the then we kind of laughed about it. And then we all went and had drinks in the bar. Like nothing just happened. Yeah, yeah, we did. Like nothing happened. But you know, it's funny about that. Danielle's the one who put the book on TV because she knew we were all questioning about it and everything. And it was all, all this stuff going on behind the scenes. And she said to Eric, she's the one who told producers she was fine with it coming out. And then Teresa showed the book on her interview. Yeah. But it was all going to be off camera until Danielle okayed it. And then, well, and Danielle's the one that brought it to the re to the restaurant that day. No, did you know? I just found this out from talking to Carlos. He crawled under the table to give it to her. Oh, I didn't know. No, that. so Carlos King, who was your producer, yes, yes, he crawled under the table and handed her the book to bring it out at the table of the table flipped it dinner. Yes, with Danielle, you see Danielle slamming on the table. We were like, where the fuck did that come from? Yeah. Carlos is the I one who gave it to her. I thought it was in her bag. All of a sudden, she bends down, gets this book, and puts it on the table. Who is Carlos? Carlos is going, hey, hi. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, gave it to her to bring it up and gave it to her at the table. See? Reality is never reality, man. <laughs> I know. Jacqueline, you know, you just started. You had all these fun you know, moments with Teresa laughing, this and that. And then obviously it got serious. Yeah. Like we have this fighting. We have, the, this is my sister-in-law's. Were you yeah. ever just like, whoa, this show took a turn I wasn't expecting? Yes. And and I, I was feeling a little alienated too, because, you know, they were getting mad at me, but I had to film with Danielle. Somebody had to film with her. I mean, I'm very good. You know, if someone was a meaningful person in my life, I'm always open to like an olive branch or to resolving it or whatever. But, you know, someone like Danielle, who was not really in my life before show, right. I don't have an interest, you know, or Melissa, I would never even entertain her. Teresa was part of my history before the show, loved her like a sister. Like I would always be open to reconciliation, you know, maybe at our most, in our biggest fights, I probably wouldn't, you know, but in the end, I'll be, I always would. The show causes a lot of problems because you have producers in your ear kind of playing one against the other. You know, they make you think like you're their best friend so they could gather information from you, share it with the other producers that are with the other producers. And they all kind of work together to like cause problems. And then you have, you know, on the cast, you have cast members 
feelings, saying things. And so it it's very easy to get sucked into that whole world. And it's very hard to maintain friendships, like true friendships on that show. Like usually on the show, you're thrown together and you're filming together because you're all cast together and you're filming, you know, but it, is it like, are you friends off camera when this is all done? You know, sometimes it's like show friends, you know, and, but you have your real friends too. You guys of all people, like I always say, like the OG, cl- the old OG ones, like you guys from Jersey, the OC, like you guys legit were all friends, family. Right. I, and that's when, and you're still struggling to keep that together from the show. I can't even imagine how a lot of these shows are now when they literally do just pluck, oh, this one's cool. Let's put them all together. Like how they even make a show from that. Right. Because then you just don't care enough about that person or their history and you don't have a history of them. So you don't care if you say things that hurt their feelings because you don't know them. You know, you don't yeah. know them. You Who don't cares? Care. I don't know you. Which which that's the best way. You know, it really is. That is probably the best way. And I think that's why after Teresa saw what happened with our family, she did not want to film with her family because like, listen, before the show. Melissa and Joe were at everything I was ever at for her. Every birthday party, every event, her housewarming, her daughter's christening. They were always there. She always included them in everything before the show, you know. But because they were, they had like some issue. I think Melissa was jealous that she was on the show and wanted to be on. She always wanted to be famous. So she wanted to be part of it, too. And she felt like, why aren't you bringing me in, you know, kind of a thing. She didn't want her on the show because she knows what the show's about. It's all about, you know, you're constantly going to be fighting with people on the show. There's always going to be something. Because you guys were the original crew that had the family issues. I mean, look at yeah. you, Caroline, and Dean. I mean, three of the five, you guys were family. But this is the thing. They didn't even, they weren't even asking for new housewives. They really weren't. Like, um, yeah. third season, they just added Melissa and Kathy, right, Jacqueline? Yeah. Yeah. And like now they ask us if we know of uh, any other women that want to come on the show. They ask us. Yeah. Every season they look for new people. Yes. But season three, they didn't ask any of us. Did they ask you, Jacqueline? I don't remember that season three. Yeah, you're right. I don't because usually every season they would ask me if I knew anybody. Yeah. They didn't ask us. And they just, it was done behind our back. Like it was done behind my back. Like I didn't know they were casting my family. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, like you guys touch upon, like it, this not just, you know, a lot of times it's like these single women, right. And they're just plucked together and like, Oh, out living this life. Like it's your yeah. sister-in-law, it's your husband, right. it's your kids. I mean, look yeah. at what you went through, Jacqueline, on top of the sister-in-law and the family, then you have Ashley that gets involved. Yeah. So then yes. you have extra shit going on. Yes. And because Ashley has a mind of her own. She's very strong willed. She always speaks her mind. She's always going to speak out about stuff. And I used to get mad at her because I'm like, let me fight my own battles. Like, don't get involved. Like when you get involved, that looks really bad. Like you need to. Stop. And whenever I would fight with somebody, she would get vocal about it. And I would be like, stop. Doing, <laughs> you know, which she she felt bad. Like she's now just trying she, to protect mom. Like I get it, yeah. but still, now that she's older, I think she like reached out to you guys to apologize and everything because she got involved. But yeah, she was just protecting her mom. So you guys, we just wanted to let you know about the Getting Real with the Housewives podcast from Us Weekly. It's your one-stop shop for all things housewives with weekly updates and exclusive interviews with your favorite ladies. It features all the latest housewives news you want to know about, plus exclusive interviews and content you can't find anywhere else. Us Weekly host Christina Garibaldi delivers all you need to know about your favorite housewife franchise and explores all the behind the scenes drama you didn't see on TV. Download Us Weekly's Getting Real with the Housewives wherever you get your podcasts. And Google Us Weekly's podcast to get more great content about the shows and celebrities you love. Was it ever a time, Jacqueline, that you were doing this? Because like from the get go, pretty much, like you were with your whole family and Danielle. Was there ever a time that you're like, man, this is fun. I actually like doing this show. This is cool. Like the first couple seasons. Yeah, it was in the beginning. That was it, right? It was fun for you too, Jacqueline? Yeah, it was very fun for me, even though I had to go through the shit with Ashley pulling Danielle's hair. But you know what? Someone told her, told Ashley 
that Danielle hit me. <gasps> so that was Ashley defending me. So she ran out to to be like, who do you think you are? Because she thought Danielle hit me because people were telling her Danielle hit your mom. A producer did or just someone at the fashion show? I remember her saying a producer told her that, but now she's saying it was someone there. But I don't know if it was a producer or someone there, but someone told her that Danielle hit me. And I thought it was a producer, but she's saying it was someone there. So when this plays out with your girl, like Teresa, could you imagine if Gia's like pulling someone? Like, what were you thinking? Were you just like, oh my gosh, I thought Teresa's table flip was crazy. And now we have this. I'm like, go home. (laughs) And I remember standing there to keep my daughter away. I'm yelling at her to go home after the hair pull. I'm, I'm trying to get Teresa from stop. Like, I didn't know if she was going to beat her ass or whatever. She's like, I'm not, I wasn't going to touch her. And then I, I was waiting for Danielle to just leave. <laughs> and Danielle was in the car. And then Dan, what came out later on is Kim G said she was in the car yanking out her own hair. She was yanking out her own extensions. <laughs> Danielle was nagging, yanking oh, them out. God, yeah, she was yanking oh them. my <laughs> if God. You watch the scene. Ashley pulls her hair. Her head goes back and then back up. And that's it. Now Danielle's saying that she ripped her extensions out of her head, that her head was slammed on the floor. She had a concussion. None of that <sighs> happened. Oh my God. And then Kim G said she was in the car ripping her own hair out for dramatics because the police were coming. And you were there, Teresa, with this whole thing. Do you remember it? Yeah, well, I didn't. That's I didn't know that she was ripping her own hair out. I, that's I, that's news. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. I mean, if that you know, I think Ashley pulled her hair, but not that hard, you know. Yeah, it didn't come out. It just like she put her head up like this and yanked it back. But it was funny when the cops came. They're like, we hear this. We get calls from her all the time, like from Danielle, like all the time, and they kind of like almost. Oh like, my it. god! What? I mean. It's just crazy. Like it was craziness, but like, so when the police came in, they, they questioned you because Danielle gave them your name and you're like, what? And you're, they're like, we need your ID. You're like, I didn't bring my ID. He's like, you're like, why do you, why do you have to talk to me? Like you go, I didn't do anything. I, I was just going to talk to her. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. <laughs> I like, remember that. Like, I remember that. On. <laughs> I know. I remember <laughs> that. I chase people when I want to have just a nice civil conversation with them. <laughs> she said a lie and I wanted to like say to her, why did you say that? She ran away from me. So that's why I was chasing her. Yeah. So Chris is like this guy. He's just like, <laughs> let me have my glass of wine. You crazy asses. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah, he's Can I just enjoy my wine? Was he ever like to you? Was he like, Jacqueline, what are we doing? Like this is no. our family. This is our kids. No, he just stays out of it. He He's just like, oh, my God, you guys are crazy. He didn't, you know, he was upset. Ashley got involved um, with it, obviously, you know, because we're always like, don't get involved, don't get involved. So that was, you know, tough. But no, he just really stayed out of everything. He didn't really get involved. But he never was like, like this isn't worth it. Like, this isn't worth us, the, the families stuff the he drama doing the show because he liked collecting the paycheck so no he would never tell me to stop it he wanted me to stop the show when i wanted to quit <laughs> i mean you get a big paycheck so to be on the show you get paid well so he liked that part you know but you know he didn't get involved in the drama and stuff like that ever no, he was he was always, he's always stayed out of it you know when i want i wanted off the show i mean i quit probably three times i mean i quit after season four and then I wasn't allowed to quit. You know, I had one more season left on my contract. So I had to come back season five because we we stopped filming season four finale was the night before season three reunion. Oh, yeah, that was so rough. it was back to back filming. So that's why I didn't go to season three reunion. And there was a lot going on at the time with me. My son was like at the height of his, um, you know, he had regressed a lot and he was about to get diagnosed with autism, but he didn't have the diagnosis yet. Right. So I was going through that, fighting with them, just a lot going on, fighting with my daughter. It was like a bad look for my daughter. Like so much was going on that I just wanted away from the show. I hated what they were doing, how the producers were like bringing up. It was getting ugly, you know, yeah. with everything. And I didn't like the direction the show was going in. And I didn't like the feeling I was having being in it. And I just wanted off. And I literally had a meltdown. I was like, I can't be on the show anymore. Like I'm looking at my son, like, there was a lot going on behind the scenes that I didn't really 
shed light with the producers as much because I didn't want to keep drawing attention to my son and what was going on until I had a diagnosis. So I was like suffering and, you know, with what I was going through with my son and I didn't want to bring it to light until I had a diagnosis. So I was like stressing with that. I needed to deal with that. I didn't need to deal with the show and all the bullshit going on with the show. I just wanted off. And then I ended up coming back after, you know, I skipped the reunion because I thought I was done with the show at that point. I had to come back the next season. Then I quit the show and then uh, for six season. But then by the end of the sixth season, we really wanted the money. So I really came back seven season for the money. That's what, the only reason I came back. And then finally, you're like, OK, now it's not even worth the paycheck anymore. Well, then they demoted me to like a part time role. And I didn't want to do a part time role because I'm like, if I'm going to go into this lion's den where I'm fighting with everyone, it's not worth going in there for a part time money. Yeah. Well, I want the money. Totally pay me. They told me if you go in and film and, you know, we see like how you're like getting along with everybody and your storyline coming together, then you might be full time again. And I said, that's bullshit. I know how you guys work. but Why would you? Uh, all of a sudden give me a full-time role when you're already paying me part-time like you're just going to use me all season long and then rid of me so I was like it's not worth it to me I just want to be done with it so I wouldn't I wouldn't film and then they then they called me to film a couple different scenes I think it was the posh fashion show and a couple other things and I wouldn't do it so is your life just is it better it's easier like peaceful (laughs) so much it's like I have my life back it's like reality now you know, like your husband, your kids, everything got better. Yeah. She moved to Vegas. Her parents are out there, right? Jack and yeah, two, her two, her her two like brothers are out there. Brother lives 25 minutes from me. My other brother lives about 20 minutes from me. My cousins live like five minutes from me. So I have all my family now where before it was all a Christmas family. Now I've got my family around me. Um, I live in a very private neighborhood. You see how work, how life works? Like first, you yeah. were with his family and now you're with your family, which is beautiful, you know? Is that why you left? You're like, I need to get the F out of this area. That's not why we left because my husband's brother, so he was always in the garment industry and he like ventured off and did other things and he was out of the garment industry for a couple of years. And then he had an opportunity to get back in it with his brother that he's partners with. So his brother lives out in Vegas. So they have partners in California and then also in New York. And so he took the opportunity to get back into the garment industry by coming out here and running a business with his brother out here. And then they they've expanded since then. And so that's why we're now moving. I don't even want to leave Vegas or my family. It sucks. Uh But but at least I'm going to a beautiful place. But um, we're going there because he just opened, expanded his office, opened a new place in the O.C., and so now we're moving there because he, he wants everybody under one roof instead of like designers from different states working totally. remotely. And in Vegas, it's very hard to find good designers to work here. So it was either California or New York. And we picked California. It's close to my family and it's a beautiful place. Like we've always, you know, my husband's always wanted to live there. And how many times do you get asked when you're, when you're telling people that you're moving to OC? How many times? Are you asked if you would go on Real Housewives of Orange County? Oh, my God. All the time. No, I would not. (laughs) I'm so done with reality TV like that. Like I I said before, like the only like the girls trip. Could I handle a week being on the girls trip somewhere that I could handle the stress for a week of being on a show like that? But realistically, I don't have someone to watch my son Nicholas for a week while I go away somewhere. Yeah, there's, he, he needs a lot of care. Like he escapes. He's and my son's bigger than my mom now. So it's like he can't handle him. CJ could handle him. Chris could handle him in the evenings. I don't know if there's a way I could balance it. But realistically, it'd be very hard for me to do doing a show like Housewives. I'm done with that. It brings so much negativity and toxicity into your life. You don't trust people. You're looking like I like even where I live now. It's like a guard gated, you know, golf club community. It's very nice. It's very private. There's nobody driving past my house anymore. Like fans used to drive by my house all the time. You know, you, you never had like privacy, you know, I would go like this. This is what you want to see. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like no one's no one's driving by my house, you know. It's like and and Teresa knows me. I like I love talking to people one on one, but I seriously have 
social anxiety. And so when I'm around like in front of a bunch of people or having to even like the inner when we used to have to do interviews for the show, we'd go on the talk shows and stuff. I would break out in hives. I would be like, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> yeah. so for me. I, I don't like enjoy that kind of stuff. I like talking one on one or doing, you know, certain things I enjoy doing. But the show to me is just so I felt like it was giving me cancer. Like I just felt sick all the time. And and when you're highly stressed already, like in a stressful environment, and then you're doing the show, it's hard to be grounded. Normal. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. a lunatic. Just our kids alone make us crazy, let alone that. Yeah. You're just like you and you just you can't trust anybody. You just get angry. You know? If you're a fan of Real Housewives, Summer House, Vanderpump Rules or any other shows on Bravo, you know that being a Bravo fan is basically a full time job. On the Mention It All podcast presented by Betches Media, I, Dylan Hafer, am keeping you up to date on all things Bravo. Plus, you'll get to hear some of your favorite Bravo celebrities and media personalities mention it all about what happens on and off camera. Search for Mention It All on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So why though now, like you and Teresa have reconnected, like why now, like you have this nice, simple life. Why now, like, are we seeing you more? Well, for a long time, and Chris can tell you, I've been asked to do so many podcasts, so many stuff, and I never said anything. I was just quiet. Like I didn't do interviews. I didn't do anything. I, you know, doing my private thing. I would talk on like my own, you know, or like on my own page. But what people don't know is like, I've always answered questions on my, my own page, like on right. Instagram, like your stories or something. Yeah, I would just answer. I've said things in the past. No one's picked up on, you know, <laughs> but because the show is airing and, and there's so much drama around them. When I say something, it gets more attention because the show is airing and people want keep, you know, this is when people ask me more and more questions and I'm like, I'll say it. And it's so weird because I normally don't, I'll say it in a DM or like, maybe I'll say it on my page, but I don't like really elaborate, but I was sitting there and someone asked me that question about Melissa and I, Chris and I were about to watch Yellowstone and I saw the question on my phone. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I was like in a mood. I don't know. And I just answered it. And then I'm like, I don't care who sees it. I don't care who sees this, whatever. I'll say it out loud. Like, I don't care. And then just went back to my business. And then, it, you know, it got picked up. And then I talked to one other blogger that DM me. It was all about TRH, which was always, I told her, I'm like, I always hated you, your followers and your thing. Cause they were like anti me all the time. But I was like, she asked me, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Send me a question on an email. I'll answer it for you. So she sent me a question and I answered it and she used it for her blog. And I, for some reason, I just didn't give a shit. So now, I mean, I'm pretty much retired. I'm homeschooling my son, Nicholas. And I guess I, I now I'm like sucked back in because well you meet with this one. Yeah. I meet with Teresa. It's like, I'm so happy that she's back in my life. And then people have so many questions about it. So I'm like, you know what? I'll talk about it. Cause that's how I've always been. You ask me a question. I'm going to talk about it. You know? So now I'm just, I don't know why I'm doing it to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm not getting anything. From it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She has spoken about, it. I mean, this is the thing, I guess, I've been thinking like this, I, I said, you know, I didn't have time to sit on Andy Cohen, like the proper way, but like by her answering that question, look, it was like she said, she never talks to any bloggers. Yeah. I don't talk to bloggers. I put it on my own page. Yeah. And, and you then, didn't have the feeling to respond on that tweet on that tweet. And then you just did. So, And then she just did. And then I saw that. So I, you know, it was in the back of my mind. So of course I was just like, you know, it gives you like the courage. Like I saw that she put that out there. So it gave me the courage like, oh, so if I could, you know, maybe if I do reach out to her, like I'll get a response, you know, because she, puts, you know, she put something out there, but it wasn't because it she wasn't put because that out that there. Let's I, get together. And talk like I already, I, I already knew a lot of it. I, I knew a lot of it. That's another time. We're talking all <laughs> positive today. today. And the, the next time Jonathan comes on our <laughs> podcast, we'll spill more tea. Yeah. But this one is going to be all positive. Namaste. If they came though, Jacqueline, and they were like, we have the most fatty paycheck for New you. Jersey? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it this way. Yeah, yeah, she's not a California. My husband makes enough money. Now. I don't have to work now. <laughs> I don't, 
Thank God. <laughs> See, God bless. See that? <laughs> God See bless. how life works out? It's not worth the drama now for me to go and do something like that. And now that I know what the show is and what it represents and what happens during the show, I don't have an interest in going back to that at all. Are you happy you did it? I, I don't regret it because it was a very interesting experience. And I love knowing the behind the thing, scenes of things. Now I know how reality shows work. I look at them much differently now. And I'm glad that I know. I'm glad that I had that opportunity and got to experience everything that I did. It's a, like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I don't regret it. I hate that I wasted so many years like feuding with Teresa. I think now with the show behind us and the toxicity is gone and people are not in our, like now we can maintain our real friendship and not have to be, you know, pressured on the show for things. And, you know, you start to not trust each other because you were hearing stuff. I'm just glad it's behind and, and that's where I want to keep it. So look at you started with your family. It went south. Then you had a, a close friend, Teresa, that went south. You removed yourself. You're in a better place. You feel yeah. better. This is the best everything. That now again, friend Teresa is still on the show. What would you say to Teresa, your friend, who is currently still doing a show that now that you don't have in your life? your life is much better. What would you say to Teresa about doing it? Well, I mean, she's in it. It's hard to walk away from it because it is a lot of money and she's been doing it for so many years. So it's hard to walk away from. Eventually the show is going to end. So prepare yourself for what comes after the show ends and stay grounded and know what's true and real. And the people that are toxic in your life, Keep them out of your life. When you're on the show, you know you're going to be faced with the toxic people. Hopefully, they'll get rid of Melissa. That's good advice, though. You know, there's a lot of opportunities that come with the show. I, w I, I can't say money is not important when you're raising four daughters on your own. You know, like you need money to survive. Exactly. And, and this you've been doing it since day one. So to walk away from it would be very difficult, I think, for her. But when she does, when it does end, she will see like she will get her life back. And it'll be, you will only surround yourself with the people you want to surround yourself with. It becomes much more positive, more peaceful. It's nice to have, you know, your life back after the show. You'll see, like, I barely post on social media anymore. People don't have to see what I'm doing every second of the day. Like, you know, it's nice when you can just live your life and be in the moment and not have to worry about, you know, what fans are thinking, what you're, you know, the repercussions of saying something you know, on the show or whatever. Yeah, she don't she don't want any part of it, which is is a, a great thing. You know, like unfortunately, Melissa, this is what you don't know. People do things well for cameras oh my God. and for paychecks. Yes, I always knew this. Yeah, it's very sad. Like you know, and that that's the thing. You can't lose yourself in this. I didn't lose myself in this. You know, I always, you know, Jacqueline knows. I mean, she knows. I've always been real. Oh, I'm listen. I'm glad. I'm happy for you guys, because I know how great it was. I know how not great it was. And just for, like you said, the peace, the healing, you know, to move on and just like be in a good place. Like, I know how important that is for both of you. Um, so I was, you know, I'm happy that you guys were able to meet and like squash the shit and just say it's in the past. Let's leave it in the past. Let's move on. For us, we've made up like five times on camera, but you never could trust it because of every, the environment that we were in. You know, being away from the environment right. makes it much easier to trust it and to, you know, appreciate it and have a real friendship outside the show where we're not pinned against each other in any way or, you know, it's just nice. You know, I'm, I'm so happy. You guys are hot. You guys are hot. I'm so happy we got to do this, Jacqueline. I'm happy that... Wait, let me let me tell one of the... Like, one thing that I, I wish they would have always aired and they never did was um, we actually did a Lucy and Ethel scene. Joe, my ex, got all this all these yes. grapes and put them, like, in the wine room, like a whole bunch of grapes. We dressed up like Lucy and Ethel <laughs> and... Uh, when they were in the wine, when they were in the vineyard, the wine, and they were all stomping on the grapes with their feet. We, we actually did, did that. that, Jacqueline and I. We were dressed up in costumes. I don't know if it was Lucy and Ethel costumes or just girls stomping grapes, but. <laughs> well, no, it was like, um, it was Lucy and Ethel costumes, but in, in that, that scene. scene, like they were, they were in a wine, in a winery stomping and on grapes. And we were holding on to each other, crushing the grapes with our feet and everything. <laughs> it was and they never aired that. And I wish they would have aired that. They never aired I know, it. Yeah. I know. 
Well, but those are good things that you can look back and laugh about that you guys shared privately. That's good. All right, Jacqueline. Great. I'll see you soon. You, Thank you for coming no, on. This is great. I'll be back. All right. All right. <laughs> Bye. 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 Well, Teresa, that was fun. I'm so happy that we got to have Jacqueline on. I know we could have talked for hours. Can you see? Do you see how we just could go on and on and on for hours? Well, this is why we have to have her back for a part dose. Yes, we are. We're gonna have, we're gonna spill some more tea. You guys, <laughs> thank you as always every Wednesday for tuning in to us Namaste Bitches. Please don't forget to follow, rate, and review Namaste Bitches wherever you get your podcasts. And you can follow us on Instagram too. That's at Namaste Bitches Pod. Teresa. At Teresa Judice. And I am at Melissa Feaster. You guys, we hope you love, love, love this episode today. We love, love, love you listening. Love, love, love you guys. Namaste, bitches. (laughs) 